Representative Begneris, on your amendment. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Can you hear me now? Because you need to listen. Thank Representative Smith hit on my part of my amendment that I encouraged a lot. A 12-year-old, a 10-year-old who's raped and has to take care of a baby. Y'all don't want to fund early childhood education. But y'all want to let a, a child, somebody's child, have a child. Then when they're brought up in poverty, y'all want to put them in jail to make some more money. Let's get real. Where's the common sense in this house? There's no common sense in common, right? Y'all have to live with a woman's choice. That's not a kid's choice. In my amendment, in line D it says, in case in which a woman invokes her constitutional right to choose the abortion procedure. Constitution, y'all are always talking about constitution. It is her right. It is her body. You cannot and you must not try to legislate morality. All you so-called Bible thumpers in here who supposedly preach the book, y'all just talk the words, y'all don't walk the walk, but y'all won't talk the talk. The Bible says y'all should not do what I do. Look it up. There are no questions on the amendment. Is there any objection to the adoption of the amendment? Representative Hodges, on your objection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, members. Um, I just want to first of all say that I have tremendous respect for each one of you, whether you're on wh whichever side you're on on this, I respect you. And I, I think it's a, a debate that we can have respectfully. And basically what I think that amendment did, I was just looking at it as you came up here, I, I didn't see it before, it really kind of guts the bill, I think. <laughs> and while we have tremendous empathy, tremendous empathy for women of whatever age, especially for children that have been the victims of rape or incest, and it is a heinous crime, as I said earlier, but if anyone should be put to death, it should be the perpetrator of the crime, not the, not the child, not the baby. And one of the things that um, Representative Amade said, that abortion, and I know this for a fact, abortion compounds the trauma of rape and incest. I know people, having been a pastor for 35 years, I know people who have went through this, both. This, and abortion does not take away the trauma of that. It keeps it going because not only have they been traumatized once, they've been traumatized twice. And the, the sadness, the anxiety of the depression lasts for decades. And I know I have very close friends who had abortions back in the 70s. And they were never able to have children because of that. The further along in, in a pregnancy you go, the more chance it is to harming the mother, the reproductive organs, that they can never have a child. Another issue about incest that I think we need to consider that when, when a, whether it's rape or incest, a, a crime has been committed. And by that person taking that child or that woman to an abortion clinic and having an abortion, you can, they can continue to do that. Traffickers, human traffickers do that. We know that. That's what they're doing. That's how they cover their tracks because there, there's no way to track that, that they can keep perpetrating that crime on the same victim over and over. And so 
I, I think we need to think about that. Uh, one of the things I do want to point out that I think this body needs to understand, this bill deals with a detectable heartbeat, which is around 10 to 12 weeks. Up until then, if, if there's been a case of rape or incest, and by week five, you know, or six, week six or seven, you certainly know if you're pregnant or not. And this bill does not make any prohibition against a person having an abortion up to around 10 or 12 weeks. They can still have that abortion if, if they were a victim of rape and incest. So we're not stopping that. This is just after a detectable heartbeat is there around 12 weeks, 10 to 12 weeks. So I object to the amendment because I believe it, it basically just, it's a bad amendment. So I ask you to oppose the amendment. Representative Jefferson, is your question for Representative Hodges? Representative Jefferson, is your yes. question for Representative Hodges? Yes, sir, Mr. Speaker, thank you. Uh, I understand, uh, Representative Hodges, what you've uh, indicated as it relates to rape and incense, but my, my incest, rather. My, my question is, as it relates to uh, the life of the mother, if uh, looking at his uh, amendment, in some part of it is saying if there would be substantial harm or the risk of death. Uh, what's your I believe feeling? that is in, in a part of the bill, and I know as, as, as once um, Representative Cruz comes down, he has an amendment that's going to deal with that part, but there is in the bill right now an exception for the, li the life of the mother. And, and I thought so. That's why I wanted a little is. clarity as it there relates is. to uh, Representative Vignaris. And so it was probably for him, uh, Mr. Speaker, you know, because he indicated various things, but I wanted some clarity as it relates to the life of the mother, right. any substantial And that's at, at whatever point in the pregnancy. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Representative Jones, is your question for Representative Hodges? I think she just answered it. Thank you. Thank you. There are no other questions. Representative Bagnaris, to close on your amendment. Representative Hodges has brought up a point that I think we need to belabor. When a 9, 10, 12 year old is pregnant, they don't find out in 10 weeks. They walk around with big sweatshirts on, trying to hide it from their parents if it was rape or incest. So you don't know until you five, they're five or six months pregnant when you see that bump that they might have been raped and then you start to question them. It's too late to have an abortion, as you would put in this bill. The bill is common sense, please. Can legislate morality, let the families make their decision and not us. It's not for us to do. As Representative James has said, we need to let the family get together and take care of their business, not us. Representative Bagnaris has offered an amendment to which Representative Hodges has objected. When the clerk opens the machines, all those in favor of the amendment vote yes. Those opposed vote no. The clerk will open the machine. Vote your machines, members. Representative Horton, no. Representative Hodges, no. Representative Amity, no. Are you through voting? Representative White, no. Are you through voting? Clerk will close the machine. 24 yeas, 76 nays. The amendment fails to be adopted.